Today we're taking a look at a product from Spitfire Audio. I've been wanting to try out some Spitfire products for a while now and they have their lab stuff which I have downloaded but haven't really messed around with and then I heard they were doing a stripped down version of their BBC Symphony Orchestra called Discover. Let's check that out. Now before we get started, my name is Chris. I'm a freelance composer and sound designer. I started a YouTube channel not too long ago where I focus on uh, various sample libraries. I try to find ones that are free or very low cost since everybody's at home right now, although some places are opening up. Uh, people have a lot more time at home right now. So I thought I'd start up a channel that featured as many free products or again, cheap, uh, inexpensive products I could find, VST instruments, sample libraries, plugins, whatever I can find. And so that brings us to uh, BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover. So let's jump to the website really quick and go over a few things and then we'll go over into Cubase. Okay, so as you can see on their website, this is Discover. First of all, I gotta say from a, a design standpoint, I love stark white with, with colors. I've always been a fan of that, so kudos to that. Uh, so you can see $49 here, add to cart or free. That's where you click to, to take the survey. It takes five minutes and then you wait two weeks to get the product. Uh, and they send you an email, a nice little thank you video, and then they walk you through the process of downloading it. A lot of sample libraries seem to be going this route of having a downloader. I actually like that because then if I want more products from Spitfire, I can go to the downloader. It'll show me exactly what's there, what I've already purchased. Maybe I've accidentally deleted something or need an update for something, and it's all right there. Um, East West started doing this a while ago with their Composer Cloud, and, and I really like it. So I'm actually glad to see that. Another thing that they do, and we'll see this more in Cubase, is they use their own player, which I was a little hesitant on. Uh, I like Contact and I like East West Play. I know I know people have had problems with Play in the past. I've never had any issues with it, so your mileage may vary with that. But this has its own player also, but it could not be simpler to use. In fact, I think I like their their player a little more than the Contact player. Now, granted, Contact has other features with uh, building libraries and tweaking some stuff. There's a Stark. It's simple. It's elegant, and I like that. And we'll see more of that when we jump over into Cubase. Okay, here we are inside of Cubase. Now, I'm doing this a little differently. Rather than playing things back, I've just written out a few patches. There's way too much for me to go through in this. And that's the nice thing about doing these uh, free library videos is rather than taking two hours to show you every patch and all the stuff, you really can just go get it for yourself and I highly recommend it for no other reason than just to have a solid orchestral library uh, by one of the top players right now. Um, I love Spitfire stuff. I have for a while. I just haven't jumped into it yet because I have a template built around East West, which I also really love and I have everything downloaded for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I just haven't bothered with that yet. But then this came along and I saw an opportunity. So let's just look at the player real quick. Uh, it's, like I said, it, it couldn't be easier. Now, if you're an orchestral person like I am, you're familiar with the seating positions for the orchestra. And I'm, without doing too much research onto the thing, I'm 99% sure they recorded this in place. I mean, that would have been... And if they didn't record it in place, then they already pre-panned it. It sounded like it anyway. So I didn't do any panning in the final product. All I did was throw some east-west spaces on here and then uh, do a, a limiter just to kind of give it a, a little a little more brightness and sound. It sounded a little dull without it, but I think that was I think that was just because I didn't take a lot of time tweaking this. So, anyways, as you can see, it's spread out in a traditional orchestral layout. So you have the celli on the right, violin ones on the left, and then the violins two and the violas split kind of in the middle. Basses at the back, 
with the low brass and trumpets behind them. And then they put the horns on the left. Um, maybe it's just the orchestras I'm familiar with, but the or uh, orchestras I'm familiar with put, usually put the horns kind of center back so stuff bounces off the back wall because the bell of a horn faces behind them. Here they're on the left. It sounds fine. Woodwinds across the middle and then the percussion. Uh, I didn't find any instruments lacking except uh, it, it would have been nice to have a piano in this, but Labs has a piano, so I think that's why they didn't include it. Uh, and the, what was the other thing? No contrabassoon or bass clarinet, but I didn't really miss it, at least not for this tune I wrote. And they did give you a piccolo, which I thought was nice. At first I didn't think there was a piccolo, but there it is right there, so that's a nice touch. Uh, the percussion, or actually a few of the articulations, uh, I'm not going to play through them all. I have some little demo things written out here that I'll play here in a minute, but uh, very basic articulations. String got the, strings got the most love with long notes, spiccato or short notes, pizzicato, that's when the instruments are plucked, and uh, tremolos. So I'm just going to play back the, the cellos real quick. I'll go through this section by section, just playing a little bit of stuff. Stuff so you can hear it. So here is the cello. Actually, really like the sound of the strings as a whole. I think they they sound really great. They'd be excellent layer instruments with uh, some some more pronounced or some more fleshed out strings, or to couple these with uh, the full BBC orchestra libraries. Okay, so here is violin spiccato. So this is short, kind of attacked notes. Now, one thing that you may notice with especially these short notes is there are no round robins. Round robins is when the same note is recorded multiple times, two times, four times, nine times, uh, I think even 13 times in some of the massive libraries. Okay, one of the, one of the weaker instruments, in my opinion, is the Celesta. I love the Celesta, and a lot of libraries have really good sounding celestas and you might could manipulate and play around with some of the with some filters but as far as just out of the box playing i think it sounds a little too too metallic and clunky so here's the celesta So I'm not sure if it's because uh, the samples are probably uh, stretched, meaning instead of having every single note recorded, you just take like middle C and stretch it up to C sharp and down to B natural, and you do that for every third note. Uh, so I'm not sure if, <coughs> excuse me, if that's what they did with it, or maybe it's just because I only played in the lower register, but it just had a slight clunkiness to it that I, I wasn't a huge fan of. But again, it's a free library, and it's this is probably the best free library for full orchestra I've heard yet. So I, the, I'm nitpicking, really, when I give negatives. Okay, the percussion is next, and this is the one that I said is spread out over uh, the, the full keyboard, or not full keyboard, it's spread out over two octaves or so. Uh, 
Again, no round robins, so a lot of machine gun effect. And the only the only bad thing about this I noticed is I couldn't find a, a suspended symbol. There's a crash symbol, but the suspended symbol there's an odd there's an odd sound that I think is supposed to be the suspended symbol that I play at the end of the of the thing here and you can see I'm messing around with the mod wheel because I was trying to get it to play back. I'm not sure if it was a suspended symbol or a maybe a symbol swipe where you do with a, a triangle beater to get that swish sound. That seems odd that they would have that and not the not a suspended symbol. So I think it's just a bad sample. I think it was just an error when they exported and so there might be a, a patch for it later. Again, a suspended symbol I feel is kind of important, but it's not it's not a deal breaker. I mean, again, it's free, so you really can't it's hard to complain. So these are nitpicks and these are just things that I found. So here is the percussion. I just went right up the scale playing a, a few little rhythms on some of the shorter shorter notes. And here's that weird suspended symbol. Yeah, and that was with me cranking on the mod wheel. I, I couldn't figure it out. Maybe it's user error, but everything else played back just fine. And I, you, you know, just messed around with the main volume and mod wheel and everything else, and everything else played back fine. So I, I think that's an error in the patch. And... Uh, check forms for that and maybe there'll be a patch for that or maybe they'll email okay so i'm just going to jump up to brass now and play the horn i think the horn sounds sounds really nice and it's an a4 horn meaning there's four horns playing together which by the way does mean if you spread the chord out then you go from four horns to eight horns to 12 horns to 16 horns if you play a, a four note patch it's not terrible at lower volumes but when you get really loud you get that church organ effect so so here's the horn yeah i really like the horn that's i would almost use that on its own in in any tune. I think that, that sounds really good. And let's see, I believe the last one I'm gonna play is the clarinet. Uh, all the other instruments, the bassoon sounds really nice, the oboe sounds nice, flute and piccolo, they all sound really good. The clarinet, I singled it out uh, because it, it sounds fine, but some of the notes have vibrato on it, which I thought was odd, because usually in an orchestral setting, clarinets don't use vibrato, they only, only use it occasionally in certain solo instances, ensemble instances, but even then you usually don't hear it, and in jazz music. So I thought it was a little weird. Again, I don't know if maybe it was just an error in the editing, but uh, or an error in the patch, but I thought it was kind of funny. It's, it's more pronounced on some notes than others. Yeah, so I think it was on that, that G, I think it, it would, it's a really pronounced vibrato. And maybe it's user error too. Uh, but again, everything else played fine. 
except for those few instruments I pointed out had a little bit of weirdness to them. But uh, anyways, I'm going to play a tune here in a second. Well, I hope you found this useful. That was the BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover, the free version or $49 if you want it now. Uh, orchestral library from Spitfire. Hats off to those guys. I think it's a wonderful product and it's definitely worth a download. It's such a small footprint and it it plays on tablets. It plays on old PCs, old laptops. Uh, it, it's, it's a winner. Uh, so definitely go check it out. I concentrated a little bit on maybe some of the negatives in it, uh, but those are nitpicks, really. When only two instruments had little issues, and one of them was a, such a minor issue, the clarinet thing is such a minor issue that you can get, a, get around that. If it's a solo, you might hear it, but buried in a mix, you don't even notice it. So really, it's just the one negative of the odd suspended symbol. But other than that, wonderful library. It's absolutely free. I do videos like this uh, two to three times a week. Normally I do music and gear news on Mondays. I've postponed that a little bit because I did a video about whether or not, uh, it's my thoughts on if a music degree is worth it for pursuing a music career. So click on the I to go check that out if you're interested in my thoughts. Uh, I've attended several music colleges and I've had 20 years to reflect back on that now on whether or not I would do it again. And I go through some ideas on what you can do if you decide to not go to an expensive music college, if you go to a community college, if you go to um, online college, a lot of thoughts on that. Um, I also do videos on some of the projects I'm working on. I'm currently scoring a Star Trek fan film that has just an spectacular backstory to it. Uh, the story of the film itself is good. It has George Decay in it, which is pretty cool. Uh, but it's just the backstory of how this thing started and where it is now. It's a fascinating story. So go check that out. I'll put an eye there for that too. And uh, well, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.